Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be learning how to create that login page with a 3D uh, assets at the background. Okay, the one that you have seen at the start of this video. All you have to do is visit this, this uh, tool right over here. The URL is spline.design. And once you, all you have to do is just sign up. Once you signed up, uh, this is the home page. You should be able to log in. And as you can see, I already have mine over here, code mutation. And I have your VS code ready. So let's go ahead and create a project. So open folder. I'm going to place this in the location that I desired. So you can place this wherever you want in your computer. So I'll just name this project uh, logged in underscore uh, 3D. Okay. So I'm going to select this one and create index.html like so. And the starting HTML template, I'm going to save that. And I'll just type the title or change the title over here to uh, logged in uh, 3D or with 3D animation or with 3D assets or background. All right. All right. Sorry about that. I'm going to head over to the library. I already clicked on it. And we're going to be looking. As you can see, there's tons of awesome 3D over here that you can explore. So I'm going to be looking for this cloner cubes generative. So just click on that. Uh, let's wait for this one to load. So there it is. So basically what we're going to do is place this as a background that uh, in our uh, website, in our web page, we will still be able to get the uh, benefit of having this 3D animation effect. And we will just place a form on top of it with a glassy effect, right? So let me go ahead and uh, close that one. And uh, here in our uh, index.html, let's go ahead and create uh, the div. Uh, for now, I'll, we will, we're will we going to name the container or the class logged in container like so. And we're going to have an H2 over there. And after this, uh, we will, we're going to have the first input. This is going to be the uh, username or email, right? And it has an attribute of type and then text the value. Placeholder, we're going to type here username. And if you're going to save this and right click open with live server, uh, this is what we get, right? So let's just go ahead and place this at this side like so. And uh, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. And then we also need the, the one for the password, right? So we can basically just copy this and place it like that. Instead of text, we are going to change this into uh, password. We're going to uh, type here enter password. Uh, let's just uh, put first the checkbox for the remember me widget. Okay. And this is going to be label. Okay. The purpose of the four attribute, by the way, uh, uh, for example, right here, I'm going to type remem remember me. Okay. So normally, let me fix the spelling. Normally, we click here, right, to check and uncheck that. Uh, the purpose of having this ID attribute as well and this for attribute, uh, that even if the user click here in this part of the text, uh, as, you, as you can see, it also works like that, the checkbox. Without having this ID, all right, save that. If we click here, we will not be able to activate or manipulate that button uh, unless if we directly click on that. So that's the purpose of having the ID and the four attribute. All right, so the, the last thing that we need is the button, right? So let's just type here button, and we're going to type here login. All right, the type attribute, it doesn't really, it's not necessary right now, but anyway, I'll just type it here. Uh, the type is submit. And normally, all of these are being wrapped with the form, right? But uh, to make our project as uh, simple as possible, uh, we were, we're not going to do that right now. So uh, anyway, uh, let's go ahead and create our uh, style that says S over here and make sure that it is linked into our uh, HTML document using the uh, uh, link tag. Now let's go ahead and I'm just going to drag this so that, so that we have that window arrangement for our VS code and the preview of our project. And this one is a separate uh, uh, window. Uh, what we're going to do now in order to place this as a background in our project, right? We click this export button, all right? 
Now we go to play settings. Here, uh, you can actually just leave it like that by default. By default, it, it doesn't really matter for now. So here, uh, you can click this viewer, click that, and just wait for this loading to be completed, right? And then click this, uh, actually this is a copy paste icon. If we click this, again the viewer, right? Viewer, and then we click this, head over to our project, right here at the top, okay, let's let's paste that. I pressed Control V on my keyboard, and then Control S to save. I'll just press Alt Z to wrap the code like so. So this is the code that we just pasted from Spline. Let's head over to our browser over here. Make sure to save our work, right? So let's head over here, and you see that now we have that uh, uh, 3D assets. As you can see, we are able to zoom in and out. This setting can be changed here in the, uh, uh, let me go back to the spline interface. Uh, in the export, right, in the play settings, there's like zoom, yes and no. So we can set that to no if we want to, right? And then we can click this update viewer it will just take a couple of seconds to complete. And once it's done, we can go back to our project. Where is it? It's right over here. Refresh, okay. Once uh, that uh, 3D asset lo is loaded, we will not be able to zoom in and out using the scroll button. And as you can see, uh, the user can actually click and drag and rotate this one. If you want uh, to prevent that, uh, you can go back over here in the play settings and you can Choose no, uh, for example, we set that to no and pan to no, update the viewer, and we can go back over here and refresh our work. So once it's refreshed, as you can see, we click and drag, we are not, we are unable to uh, do that as well. So you can put it back if you want. So anyway, right now we are now going to focus on styling our page, making sure that this one is on top of this one over here. And... Uh, uh, have those uh, glasses styling just like what we have seen at the start of this video. So let's head over to VS Code and uh, make sure that we select the style that CSS. And I'm going to drag this over here so we can see what's, what's happening exactly as we type our code over here. So we're going to target everything and then box sizing over here and then border box. We already know that if you have been following the series. And over here, I'm going to type margin. Okay, margin, and this is going to be zero. Uh, we don't need the pixel unit. Uh, zero is okay. And then padding to get rid of the default padding in HTML. And now we're going to target the body. Okay, this one over here. So we're going to say body. And then the weight of the body is going to be 100%. Okay, and the height is also going to be 100%. Or instead of percent, we can use view height if you want or view width, you view width, and then the height is going to be view height. There you have it. And of course, we're gonna be using a flex box, so display flex, and justify content center, and then align item center. All right, so there you have it. So for the meantime, uh, I'll just type here overflow to make sure that uh, uh, there are no overflowing of elements on our, fa on, on our page. And if you want, you can also change the font size. I mean, the font family into something like Arial. I'm gonna select Arial. And after the body, we can now target uh, this one over here. This code right here is the one that is responsible in loading this 3D animation, okay? So we're going to target. As you can see, this is the opening tag and closing tag. And this tag is, is called Spline Viewer. We can copy that and go back to style that CSS and paste it over here. So we're going to set a position of absolute, like so. And now that we have position absolute, uh, we will be able to take advantage of the property called top, uh, making sure that we have zero at the top, left zero as well. If we save that, we will be able to achieve this uh, result as you can see. So right now we don't see, you know, uh, the other widgets, the input boxes, uh, the checkbox, and the button, uh, because uh, we are going to be utilizing Z index, right? Uh, we're, in, in fact, let's do that right now. Uh, first, let's make sure that the weight is 100%, just to make sure 
uh, there it is z index we're going to set this to negative one and there you have it it's been placed at the back and now our logged in uh, uh, text the input boxes the checkbox and the logged in button is now uh, on the top i'm going to zoom out uh, a little bit uh, in order to make sure that the zoom level is 100 percent so let's go ahead and target that logged in container class like so and display flex and then flex direction i'm going to set it to column all right there you go and uh, justify content center and then align item center over here okay and then padding let's have a padding of 20 pixels okay background let's use an rgba value of 255 okay 255 255 and then opacity of 0 0.2 and uh, for if opacity is one it's going to be fully opaque like so it's going to have a background but we wanted to have like a tr some kind of transparency uh, effect so we can do something like that if you want to increase the value something of your personal preference feel free to change this so right now i'll just place it back to two or 0 0.2 and then after uh, the background maybe some border radius let's try 10 pixels okay i think that's good and the box shadow all right the first value is going to be the uh, horizontal offset okay uh, i'll just set. Uh, maybe we'll we'll try three pixels three pixels and we're not seeing that yet six pixels for uh, there is vertical i think you're seeing it right now let me zoom in so the first value of three pixels is horizontal offset okay that means the distance from the original object is going to be at uh, three pixels to the to the right okay and six pixels is for vertical it's going to be downward the third and we're going to be using a color with an rgba value and i'm going to set this to zero uh, for uh, black right and an alpha of 0 0.9 for that shadow for a subtle reduce uh, or some kind of trans transparency effect all right so let's set a border of something like a white uh, to make it like uh, have some kind of glassy effect over there so one pixel solid and then rgba this one is going to be 255 255 this is going to be white uh, but we are going to set the uh, alpha value to three and we will be able to achieve that kind of uh, styling like so all right so let me place it back over here I'm going to zoom out to 100% and let's set the width to around 90%. Hold on, let me just, uh, let's, have, let's make sure that to have a semicolon here at the end to avoid syntax error. And we have something like that. Uh, if you want, we can set here a maximum width of 600 pixels. All right. So that, uh, because if without this, uh, you will have this width, all right, for large screens. So we want to limit the maximum width to around 600 pixels, although we are specifying that the width is 90%. And I think we're good with the container. These things right here are elements inside of our container class, right? And they are the input elements. And so we can go ahead and target that using this class. I'm going to copy that, place it over here, and I am going to target the input and the placeholder, this one right over here, you see that username and password text, that's the placeholder attribute. I can target that using input, and I'm going to type here uh, the pseudocode colon colon, and I'm going to type placeholder. So it will affect the styling of this placeholder over here. So the placeholder, that one, username and password. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the color to white. Okay, make sure we have a colon over here white and then we have a text shadow uh, let's have two pixels two pixels uh, two pixels and then dark gray a uh, hex value of hashtag two four two four two four and now we have that uh, maybe we can uh, uh, comment this out for now maybe we'll, we'll we will use that maybe this in this logged in i think that logged in is h2 under logged in container uh, let's do that let's copy this place it over here and then uh, we are targeting the h2 under the logged in container 
and I'll just copy this, put it right here, delete this one, and I'm going to set the color of that text into white. I think that's good. And for the placeholder, we don't see it anymore. Let me type here the logged in container and then input uh, the type, an input box that has a type of text and then the one that has the password. Let's do that. So the input box that has a type of text. Okay, that means we are targeting this one. And we also wanted to style, so comma right over here, we can basically copy that and paste it. Instead of type of text, we also wanted to style the input box with the type attribute of password. So now that we have that, uh, make sure that the comma is only here at the middle and then open and close uh, brackets or braces, we can have here, for example, a, a background. Okay, let's say background over here. Uh, We're going to make this transparent. Uh, let's try an RGBA value, uh, 255, this one, I'm going to select that, uh, maybe 0 0.1. We're going to remove that border. It doesn't look good. And let's have some padding at around 15 pixels. Let's see what happens. There you go. And let's try to separate them. Uh, it's going to be margin. I think maybe around 10 pixels, top and bottom, left and right, I'll just type here zero. Okay, now we have some spacing. Let's try to increase this value to around 0 0.4. Okay, now we can see it. All right, so let's set the width to around 100%, like so. So we have, so that it will consume the entire width of its container. And if we type here right now, it's black, we can set it to white if we want to. So now it's white. Uh, we'll try to improve that a little bit. Maybe reduce this one to 0 0.2. Okay, there you go. So what we're going to do, if we click here, we wanted to remove this uh, uh, border. As you can see, there's like a black border. We can, you can actually change, we can actually change that. And aside from that, when we click here, we can actually change the background color if we want to. So let's do that. All, all we have to do is copy everything here and paste it. But instead of this, we're going to say focus. That means if this uh, one over here is clicked, then we're going to delete all of this because we wanted to change, for example, the background color. We want it to be white. Okay, when we click here, the, as you can see, uh, the uh, background color for the input boxes uh, turned to white. And of course, the color for the text we want it now to be uh, black. Maybe we will use the dark uh, color and we achieve something like that. We also wanted to remove that outline. We set that to none. Now we don't have an outline. And maybe we can design our own outline or probably border. Uh, set that to one pixel solid. And in RGBA, we are going to set a, uh, a zero, zero to make it dark but we are going to reduce the uh, opacity to around maybe 0 0.7. Okay, let's make sure to have a semicolon over here. Now, if we click focus, we have some border right over there, but it's not very strong, just subtle enough. Maybe we can increase the value to eight and we click that. Okay, now we have something with that effect. Maybe a border radius would be good as well. Uh, we can do that. Let's try to set that border radius over here. Let's try uh, 10 pixels. Okay, I think that's good. All right, so now let's go ahead and target this button over here. So that is also residing inside the container, right? Logged in container. And we're going to target the button. And maybe let's set the width first to 100%. Let's uh, set the padding. 15 pixels for top and bottom. And then 20 pixels left and right. Uh, border, uh, we're going to set it to none, no border, and then border radius around 5 pixels. Okay, I think that's good. Maybe for the input box, uh, boxes right here, just around 5 pixels to make it uniform. Background color, I already have a, a prepared uh, color here. Uh, that will be similar to the background. And that is going to be FA2A38 hex value. There you have it. Let's have a margin top, margin top, so we can have some spacing. 
the margin tab, let's try 25 uh, pixels. And you can change the cursor to pointer. And the color for the text, maybe white is good. So we, we, if we are going to hover on it, we can also add that effect. Uh, we can copy that, uh, change the button to hover, and we can delete all of this. And uh, what we're going to do is just change the background color into a hex value, EA, and then 0918. So when we hover on it, as you can see, uh, there's like a change, subtle change in color. All right, let's save our work and let's go ahead and maximize this, as you can see. So if you're not satisfied with the current design, feel free to change this uh, code over here. And... Uh, you should be able to change the values for the color that you want. And the last thing that I'm going to uh, share to you, you can actually add some 3D assets over here, just like the drone that you have seen uh, in the, at the start of this video. So what we can do is head over back to Spline. Uh, where is it? We have this right over here. Uh, just make sure to leave this open. So just type again spline.design and then logged in. Since we are already logged in, it, it will route us directly to that uh, uh, home page of the tool, right? So there you go. What we're going to do is head back again to the library, and we can actually pick anything here. We can copy and paste some assets, for example, for that drone. So feel free to explore this, all right? Uh, the drone is something, it's an asset that is part of this one right here, the 3D text asset. And this is not actually just text. There are some objects in it that we can copy and paste to into this existing uh, uh, 3D elements that we have right now. So as you can see, it is now loaded. Uh, while you're pressing the Alt button, you can click and drag to do this kind of uh, uh, navigation option for you to be able to, sh to, to explore uh, these uh, uh, objects in the 3D uh, uh, viewport in this interface and for the drone we wanted to select that sometimes you are able to select an object by just clicking on it like 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 so like for this one for this 3d text okay uh, once we once we get this we we get this gizmo uh, we call it gizmo in 3d and you can move that by clicking and drag this uh, okay actually the one that was selected was the entire objects over here so it's kind of tricky to select so if you are unable to click a certain object to copy, you can navigate in this left pane over here, look for drone. Okay, as you can see, we have pyramid and then shape. Uh, we're looking for a drone. Uh, if we can't find that, we can search it here, drone, there you go. Once you see that, double click on it. As you can see, uh, this is an indicator that we are now selecting this object. So now that it is selected, let's try to increase the scale. Okay, let's increase the size of this drone. Uh, just lock this button over here, click that. And uh, once this one is locked, type here, for example, around uh, a value of, just double click here and type the value of around 10. Okay, now that's quite a huge one. Let's try it around four. Okay, press Control C on the keyboard. Go back over here, right? and then control V to paste. Now we don't see it, so I scroll up. There's actually like a gizmo over here, these arrows and these curves and these lines. So once you see this, uh, hover over to this button, I mean to this arrow, okay? This one over here, and then drag it to the top, and there you have it, there's our drone, right? Now we can decrease the scale of this drone uh, click this lock button and this value over here. It's currently at 8. Let's type a 4, uh, maybe around 3. Okay, it's up to you right now. Maybe I'll try 2. Now I'm going to scroll like that, like zoom in using the scroll button. And I'm going to use this line, this arrow, to place it like that. I'm clicking and dragging. And for the Y position, okay, vertical position, I'm going to zoom in. And this red right here, oops, this arrow right here for the red is to go to this uh, direction. 
I'm going to place it around here. Maybe put it like that. And I'm going to reduce the scale to around 1. And maybe 0 0.8. Uh, you can play around your personal preference on the size and the position of this drone. And I can change that color, okay, by clicking this button over here. Maybe something like, uh, you can play around. At this point, it's a personal preference. Maybe something like red as well. And I'm going to select some of this option. And after, uh, once you're satisfied, okay, hold on, it's quite far. I'm going to place it downwards like so. And once that's done, I'm going to click export again and then update viewer. All right, so once you have done that, we can head back over to our project like here and then refresh. It will just take a few seconds. All right, so there you have it, guys. We have some 3D, we have drone and some animation at the background, awesome login form. And I hope that this has been informative for you. I'll see you in the next one.